This is a graph showing the quantity of electricity generated in the United States from 1920 to 2012 by the source of that generation. Before we turn to discussing this graph, let's review some important concepts related to electricity generation. In particular, the difference between capacity, capacity factor, and generation. Capacity refers to the maximum electric output a generator can produce under specific conditions. You may have heard of the term nameplate capacity, which is determined by the generator's manufacturer and indicates the maximum output a generator can produce without exceeding design limits. So, for example, if a gener generator has a nameplate capacity of 1 megawatt, that generator can produce 1 megawatt continuously at maximum output. Generation refers to the amount of electricity a generator produces over a specific period of time. For example, a generator with one megawatt capacity that operates at that capacity consistently for one hour will produce one megawatt hour of electricity. If it operates at only half that capacity for one hour, it will produce 0.5 megawatt hours of electricity. So an important uh, point here is that capacity is a measure of power and is measured in watts whereas generation is a measure of energy flow or electricity generation and is measured in megawatt hours or kilowatt hours which is a measure of energy not power. Now many generators do not operate at their full capacity all the time. They may vary their output according to conditions at the power plant, fuel costs, and or as they're instructed from the electric power grid operator. This highlights the notion of capacity factor, which is a measure of how often an electric generator runs for a specific period of time. It compares how much electricity a generator actually produces with the maximum it, it could produce at continuous full power operation during the same period. In the United States, Generators with relatively low fuel costs are usually operated at, to supply baseload power and typically have high average annual capacity factors. So for example, net nuclear power has a capacity factor of about 90% in the United States and coal has a capacity factor of about 64%. Natural gas has a capacity factor of about 42% and hydro comes in at about a 40% capacity factor. Oil fire generation has a capacity factor of less than 10% due to the fact that oil is not used for baseload power and is simply used, called, it is called into action during peak demand periods and so much of the oil generating capacity lies idle for much of the year. Wind energy has a capacity factor of about 30 percent due largely to the fact that it is an intermediate source of energy. So in the United States in 1920 there was about one gigawatt of installed capacity. A gigawatt is 10 to the ninth watts. By 2012 installed capacity had risen to one terawatt of power which is uh, a terawatt is 10 to the 12th watts so that the increase from 1920 to 2012 in installed capacity amounted to a 1000 fold increase in installed generating capacity in terms of actual kilowatt hours generated there were about 39 gigawatt hours of power generated in, in 1920 that increased to uh, about 4 terawatt hours in 2012. And that represents about a 100 fold increase. So let's uh, keep in mind that number 4 terawatt hours, which is the current rate of electricity generation. And this upward trend uh, in this graph indicates or shows this trend starting out here at about 3. 39 gigawatt hours in 1920 and increasing very sharply up to over 4 terawatt hours in 2012. The next graph uh, presents the same data 
but instead of looking at the actual quantity generated, looks at the shares of the different sources used to generate power. So in this case, the vertical axis is the percentage of net electricity generation accounted for by a particular source, again over the period 1920 to 2012. In the early, early part of the 20th century, coal and hydropower dominated electricity generating uh, uh, generation, accounting for over 90 percent of the total. By 1960, they still accounted for about 70 percent of the total, although hydropower share had dropped to uh, about 20 percent. One of the remarkable uh, features of this trend, of this data set, is the remarkably constant share of coal. Starting out here in uh, 1920, coal is at about 53 percent, and then all the way out here into the year 2000, coal is still at about 52 or 53 percent of total generation. A remarkable uh, level of inertia given the uh, very large expansion in the overall increase in power generation uh, for the sector as a whole and also for for coal. Hydropower, which is the red area here, has since declined to about 7 percent of total generation, although it remains important in a number of western states. This blue area, up, this blue share up here is nuclear power, and nuclear power is unique in regards to the rate at which it captured a significant share of power generation. The first power plant came online back here in about 1957, but by 1991 nuclear power had accounted for about 20 percent of power generation. And that's the fastest that any new source of electricity generation has captured such a uh, significant share. It has since plateaued at about 18 or 19 percent, uh, due largely to the fact that no new nuclear power plants uh, are being built. Despite the uh, stoppage in the construction of new power plants, nuclear power has been able to maintain a relatively constant share due to what is called uprating at uh, existing nuclear power plants, which refers to physically modifying a plant to increase its generating uh, capacity. The increase in nuclear power came at the expense of oil and gas. You can see oil, which is this uh, purple share here, uh, decreased significantly in share in the 1970s, and to a lesser extent, so did uh, natural gas. And the, the principal reason for this decline were sharp increases in the price of oil uh, beginning in the 1970s, right about here, uh, as well as government policies in the 1970s and 1980s at the federal level, which actively discouraged the use of oil for power generation. Natural gas saw its share uh, of power generation more than halved between 1970 and 1988 uh, due to the combined effects of nuclear power and the increase in coal-fired generation. Another notable aspect of electricity transitions is the significant increase in natural gas uh, in the last eight or ten years. You can see that it has gathered, uh, captured a significantly larger share and by 2012 it has, accounts for almost a third of electric generating capacity, its highest share in history. And as indicated by the drop in this uh, blue area here, gas increased its share at the expense of coal. Um, in 2012, coal accounted for just 37 percent of power generation, its lowest share in at least 90 years. A principal reason for the significant gain in natural gas market share is due to the fall of natural gas prices, due to the expansion of gas supplies, particularly shale gas. Coal also is, faces a, a tough road in the United States to uh, new power plants because of increasingly stringent regulation of its harmful emissions and the specter of policies to limit greenhouse gas, em gas emissions. Coal uh, faces large hurdles in regards to climate change because 
uh, it releases almost twice as much carbon per joule of fuel uh, compared to natural gas. The other notable recent feature of electricity generation in the United States is found up here in the upper corner which shows the uh, rapid ascent of wind energy. Generation from wind climbed from about 2 billion kilowatt hours in 1989 to uh, more than 140 in 2012 and that's a, a very rapid uh, increase in uh, overall generating capacity although the rate of increase uh, is not any greater than we saw for nuclear power in the 1970s and despite the uh, rapid increase in the amount of power generated the share of wind remains at about a modest uh, three percent of total uh, electricity generated so uh, one of the uh, final notes to make about this graph is what it will take for any new source of power or even an existing source of power to expand what it would take for such a source to capture a significant fraction of the uh, generation and it really takes on the order of uh, hundreds of gigawatt hours to make any significant headway into the market share in the US power generation sector. A hundred gigawatt hours represents about two and a half percent of current generation of four terawatt hours. So any new energy source, whether it's uh, nuclear, or rena nuclear renaissance, or wind power, or solar energy, whatever it might be, uh, these have to be deployed in hundreds of gigawatt hours increments in order to make a significant change in this picture.